and welcome to the Startup and Career Show, your destination for inspirational stories and real life experiences of startup founders, corporate leaders, and authors. I'm your host, Rushab, in conversation with Manasij Ganguly, a two time SaaS founder. He's built, scaled, and exited an apparel tech startup, Threads Hall, in 2019, and now building Zapscale, a B2B SaaS customer success platform. Based on his startup journey, Manasij has come up with the book, The Economy Class Founder to share his experiences that are not only real, but also brutal. A very warm welcome, Manasij. Glad to have you on the show today. Hey, Rishabh, thanks a lot. Uh, great to see you too. Uh, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. So Manasij, first thing is the topic of the book, right? Economic loss founder. So before I say anything else, you know, I wanted to know how, how did you come up with this name? Yeah, it's a good question, man. I mean, uh, I had written the book uh, and it took me like three and a half months and I was searching for a title which will aptly describe the entire journey which we went through. Uh, let me tell you very quickly that my startup got acquired for a hundred crore rupees all cash deal, $13 million. And if that seems like a very big number to you, let me tell you that it's a very small number. In the startup world, soccer rupee is a jump change. So I'm a very, very, very small guy and a very small fish in the very large pond. So I wanted my title to kind of like convey that piece. So I chose that uh, title which says I'm an economic class founder because I cannot qualify to go into business class or first class or can't have my own private jet and stuff. So therefore, just to underscore the fact that it's a story of struggle, a story of real heartbreaks and failure going through it to build a business, selling it. I thought the economic class name sounded pretty all right. I also went back and forth, should I call it the sleeper class founder? But then I thought maybe the economic class is not too bad. So I, I didn't name it that way. Interesting. Interesting. So Manasaj, uh, you know, you had a great corporate career going along, right? So what led you to quit the comfort of your job and get into a startup in the first place? Uh, I actually joined a startup in the US. It was a very interesting experience for like three and a half years. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. I mean, I, I, I thought it was brilliant. And the company got sold. We all made some money. Uh, but I, I thought that that intensity of the, that nervous tension of not knowing how good where the things are going to you know, the chips are going to fall uh, were both interesting. Tha, yaar. So I just thought that it would be so much more fun to go and build something else. Uh, full disclosure, we just fell in love with the idea that we had in our hand, uh, which came from my wife, of course. And we did not do enough diligence to do. And you know that's what happens. You know, first startup you do for love. Then of course you think money is more important and stuff. So it was a pure love for doing something which got us together and got us in the journey, which eventually turned into a book and this interview. So yeah, no regrets, pretty good. Awesome, awesome. So you know, uh, before before we talk about your startup journey, uh, because we have students also listen to this conversation. So I wanted to understand how was the transition like from a job where you're paid at the 30th of every month, right? to becoming a startup founder and then start paying salaries. So how was that transition? Uh, it's actually quite scary to a certain extent. I mean, I come from a very middle-class background. Uh, my dad is a professor, my mom is a writer. So, you know, like we, we don't have any business background of taking risks like this. I didn't have enough uh, like financial reserve that I will be fine. So on a 30th, when the salary does not hit your bank, uh, it is a scary thought. The first month was absolutely scary and it actually did wobble my results as well. Uh, and also leaving that nine to five job that I had and then fully be immersed in the startup building process, which of course we're doing from our own homes at the moment, was also very difficult because aapko nine to five ki job ki adat thi ki jayenge, kaam karke ke aenge. Now it is only you and your laptop and your ideas and stuff. I suffered with a lot of uh, like concentration issues in the first two, three weeks. But then as it happens, you know, the, the fear of uh, failure uh, takes over and then everything goes to the back burner. So wo thoda, thoda to hai. it's a leap that one has to take and that leap will always, gala sabka sukhega, dar sabko lagega. It's just the fact that once you immerse into that, it just pulls you along, man. It's just how it goes. So it was scary. I will not say gungo that oh, I was never scared. It was, you know, scary, but it was, it is, it was uh, the thing that I had to do at some point. So yeah, man, it was a fun experience from that perspective. 
Oh, absolutely. But you know, uh, um, Manasi, the thing is, you said that you jumped into the startup with the love, right, of the idea. But what led you to take the plunge in the apparel industry? Because there was no such buzz, right? I mean, I believe yours was the, probably the first tech company which was focused on apparel side. So what was that yes, we were, that you jumped into? It's a good question. And, you know, uh, uh, we were the first apparel tech company anywhere in the world to actually make an exit with being uh, funded by VCs and trying to run this in, in a very fast pace. So from that sense, of course, we did create a category of our own. Of course, up to apparel tech, uh, now there are a lot of startups. But in 2014, when we started, there was no apparel tech, there was no SaaS, there was no AI. So everything was like, meh, what is this? Uh, so that was a little uh, leap. And that actually came out because my wife, uh, you know, who's also my, you know, uh, we've been married for 18 years now. And we've been together for 26 years. She was my first girlfriend in my school days. And then we ended up marrying each other. Doesn't matter. What matters is that she came from the apparel tech background. So she did the, her, uh, you know, her work in NIFT in Delhi, National Institute of Fashion Technologies. And she got exposed to this entire trillion dollar industry where there's so much of wastage because koi bhi us industry ke liye us time pe software bana nahi tha. So we thought that it would be a pretty cool idea to go and build something for this space. And Mosmi had uh, nailed down the problem statement very nicely. And then all Abhishek, Batish and I had to do was to basically take that and you know build the entire product build a business build a team things around that so i would say the genesis of the idea came from osmi uh, and then we just followed it through with execution for what 6 years before we sold it so yeah it's 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 my wife's uh, doing marry well my friend <laughs> well, that that's the norm of the world in which ways right <laughs> That's that's correct. Yeah. So, please uh, disregard my statement. It is uh, regardless you want to start a startup or not. Please marry well. That's okay. Awesome. So, uh, Manasij, uh, well, Mosmi came up with this idea, and you sounded it very easy that you guys just went ahead with the execution. But tell me, uh, how were your early days at uh, Threadsol? Right, all the co-founders uh, coming in together. Uh, how are you guys managing your day-to-day -day operations? Ekdam early days when we were only four of us, uh, like we were trying to like uh, form the idea and ideate and build a business and build a product. Because the problem is that of course you build a product and the technical like, implementation of your innovation. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we would work our day jobs, and then we will after day job we will meet at Abhishek's place, and we will work till four in the morning. So after no shampoo, seven by seven, like if four by seven, we would work. Then we'll go back to our homes, and the next day again show up at our workplace was paying us the salaries and stuff. So we kind of like moonlighted for a while. Uh, and it was it was fun, but it was intense. Then of course, it, the intensity went 10 notches higher the moment we quit our jobs. And we had to suddenly now figure out where we investments, where will you get the customers from. Uh, so that was, you know, much more, let's say, you know, being thrown in the deep side of the pool. So yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, I would say it was, it was uh, you know, you had to continuously be on the button to execute. Otherwise, kaya ki, Startup uh, fail very quickly. In fact, 99% of startups will actually fail. Uh, you know, and that's the reality of our life. Uh, to make sure you're in the, that one percent, you have to put that extra effort. I think that was it came through in the early days. Uh, then, of course, you know, uh, moment the wheel starts turning, आपको कुछ customers आ जाते हैं. There is belief uh, around you that the product that you have built is is looking out to be good. Then you go out raising funds, which is of course another story altogether. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would say the, the, the initial days may, when the four of us went from zero to building the product, uh, it had two distinct phases, when which, one which we moonlighted and it was intense. And then the intensity became much more the moment we quit our jobs uh, and tried to build customers. And that's how the business and startup really comes up. It's, it's always a product and a science project. But will people pay for it or not is the real question. That's when it gets uh, so much more intense and fun. So yeah, that's that's how it works. Absolutely, absolutely, Mansi, because uh, that's that's the end game, right? But tell me, uh, when you guys were building the product, right? So how did you go about it and reaching the MVP stage, so to speak? Um, okay, so my theory has always been that okay, so you can you can obviously sitting in your drawing room, you can make neat diagrams about how the product should look like and you know how the world should be. The world has no obligation to be nice to your innovation, by the way. The world has going to, is going to run in its own pace and you are probably a minor inconvenience with your innovation. So what happens is that whatever you thought, this is how we're going to build this thing, 
इसको आपको रोड टेस्ट करना पड़ेगा बहुत जल्दी बिकॉज इफ यू डोंट रोड टेस्ट इट यू कैन एक्चुअली कीप बिल्डिंग फॉर फॉर एवर एंड नो बडी एक्चुअली सीन द स्टॉक सो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर यू टू गेज की आपका जो डायरेक्शन ट्रेवल है वो सही है कि नहीं है सो इवन इन जैप स्केल माई करेंट स्टार्टअप एंड थ्रेड सॉल्व very early we actually gave a very small version to our early customers ki bhai ye try karo free mein there is no cost commitment we not asking you to pay anything uh and try it and you know let us know what your feedback is so we did trials all over india and eventually uh, a lot of south eastern asian countries as well indonesia vietnam philippines bahrain bahut desh mein humne trial kiya these are all purely out of pocket expense where you are funding it yourself अभी कोई इन्वेस्टर नहीं है अभी कोई कस्टमर नहीं है इट इज जस्ट यू एंड योर रिजर्व्स, एंड दैट्स व्हेन यू टेस्ट द बेसिक एजम्पन्स द फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ योर प्रोडक्ट इफ दैट वर्क्स वेल देन यू नो दैट योर फर्स्ट प्रिंसिपल इज करेक्ट कि हाँ आपने जो पहला बनाया था थीसिस वो थीसिस सही है अब इसके ऊपर आप इमारत खड़ी कर सकते हैं यू कैन एक्चुअली बिल्ड एंटायर एडिफिस ऑन टॉप ऑफ दैट एंड दैट टेक्स मोर पीपल मोर मनी मोर टाइम but that first piece the first lay bricks that you lay are the most important pieces and i always believe that the earliest you go to customers to show them what it is and don't ask them for any payments make them your allies in the whole journey that is the best way to build a really good product for uh, the, the, the future this is exactly what we did in thread solve uh, and exactly i'm doing right now in my current startup which is zap scale so it had worked well hopefully it will work well this time also wow so this is very important of co-creating with your customer right yes. uh, so i think yes. this plays a very important role but tell me when i was uh, going through your book uh, manasij uh, there was an interesting uh, period where you had given this product of yours on a trial mm-hmm. for for our, over a six months to i think one of the larger players uh, in the indian apparel industry uh, yes. after six months they were the results were good they were all very happy but still they didn't end up paying for it right so as a founder wanted to know how did you face that situation i'm sure it wasn't easy i felt i'm gutted i mean i, I felt soul crushing defeat yaar ye to itni mehnat ki main tumhare sath yaar oh there's so much of emotional uh, attachment to that first customer for which you worked so hard and they say finally that you know what we're not buying you is just is just it just is like decimates your you know your 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 personality very much in that perspective uh madura was the company we're talking about i mean they make allen solly peter england pantaloons one of the largest manufacturers uh, you know on in india and uh, we gave them the product for 6 months to go and try it out in bangalore uh and then they did not they did not buy it even though the results were pretty good that is all right ye ho sakta hai i mean even though your product is good and you know it does all the right things it's entirely possible that you know people would not take it there could be many reasons for that i mean you know budgetary constraints politics whatever the thing is or shuru shuru ke daur pe na when you are the early entrepreneur you feel that everything is going to work out for you so the defeats would be like soul crushing fir kya hota hai ki you know by the, the later on you realize ki yeah dekho ye hota hai it is a part of the game where even if you play your cards well it is entirely possible that things will not turn out good for you wo ek acquire test hai that you know, to, to 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 learn to deal with setbacks and stuff but i can tell you my first setback from madura was so so hard that i just went back listening to pink floyd for 48 hours straight theek hai so it was it was a it was a setback of like really big magnitude but yes of course you know now in the hindsight i think it really does not matter uh, of course there the world is full of a lot of people some people will of course at some point uh would give you the trust which is very important and these early customers are so important yaar i mean you know they are the ones see there are three pegs of a startup right one there is like you need a an a, a founder to innovate something then you need the early backers and these early backers basically are the next step without that the third step which is somebody backing you with money investors not going to happen so but wahi hai ki it's a it's a it's a journey where you know everybody gets better by just playing the hand आप वो बाहर से खड़े होके ना वो कभी भी आंसर नहीं बन पाओगे जब तक आपको कोई दो लोग आपको रिजेक्ट नहीं करेंगे ना तब तक आपके अंदर वो आग नहीं पैदा होगी सो दैट्स आई थिंक इट हैपेंड टू अस ओ बट यू नो मानसिज़ द थिंग इज आपके केस में ये ऐसा था कि दिस कस्टमर यूज योर प्रोडक्ट फॉर सिक्स लॉन्ग मंथ राइट नाउ इन मेनी केसेज वॉट है to offer a product or an offering or a service for 6 long months right and after that if a big brand rejects you it it really hits you hard isn't it 
that is correct uh, or mostly so uh, risha because when we signed the deal ki hum aapko 6 mahine ke product denge mere paas aur hum sab ke paas 6 mahine ka paisa bank mein nahi tha so i did not know that we will survive for 6 months or long or not it was a gamble it was like okay you know what i think the product is shaping out good hopefully they will pay or not but let's give them a 6 month trial period regardless so look i mean this is this is the part of, i also mentioned it in the book by the way it's, it's it's a very honest admission that we did play a very gambling hand on this uh so even though mother did not turn out to be good but the others did so we did not just have one uh, like all our eggs in one basket so we had like a bunch of other people also trying so if one guy does not do it then eventually somebody else will uh but yes i would not say that it was easy it was a pretty hard blow to take yaar <laughs> absolutely but uh, tell me how did you get your first set of paying customers uh my first sort of paying customers came through in a very interesting circumstance actually i got through a very small factory in bangalore uh very small setup but the guy was like really energetic and you know like he 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 had that hunger in his belly to give startups an opportunity to try and do something that's is the kind of persona you should go and look after like in the early days of a startup you see trying to sell to large big guys is everybody's dream but that prob is not the way to go the way to go is pick up guys in decent size organizations or mid size or small size organizations people who are willing to take that risk jo apna gardan wo matlab dalne ko taiyar hai matlab you know for the risk and stuff so there was rajesh dasuja who gave us an opportunity to do it in his factory they used to build really beautiful shirts of thomas pink very expensive shirts so the fabric was really expensive everything was very really expensive uh but then we got that break and we showed them really great results and they eventually that one factory gave us like 15 other deals because the success story went viral from that perspective in the nearby areas and you know we got so much of love from the customers so that is very important to do like choosing so i now realize that okay you don't have to immediately go and sell to apple or google it is all right uh, in the initial days choose people who are backers people who are you know who are enthusiastic about trying to give startups a birth because mostly in the corporate space mein people don't want to take risks and that is how corporates are built they're mostly risk averse but unme bhi na kuch kuch log honge there will be always be a few ek aap jyoti kahi jal rahi hogi yaar kisi ke dil mein wo dhoond le agar aapne na to fir us jyoti se agli jyoti and then the whole place gets lit that's exactly what happens so it was a it was a very interesting learning from that perspective and i have like full respect for these people for giving us those births so fabulous yaar yeah. wow awesome awesome but uh, you know uh, manasich the thing is well getting a first paying customer is important for a startup mm-hmm. it's also important that you are able to spread your wings outside your country right and and you were able to do it across multiple countries as well and as you mentioned earlier ki aapne free trials international markets mein bhi diye so tell me how yes. did you get your first international break so to speak so we we uh, that's a bit of marketing but we we actually went out doing a couple of shows so like you say ab jab abhi aap shuru kar rahe ho startup bana rahe ho aapko koi nahi janta of course your friends and family know your parents know but your parents are not going to be your paying customers and they can your friends and family be so what do you do how do you spread your wings and so what we did was we went and did some uh, international trade shows that hey we are also here uh, and we would also like to throw our hat in the ring it's very important to try to look bigger than what you are uh, even though you of course are not uh, but you of course how about the ambition of becoming bigger right so so being in those uh, events is a statement of purpose is also a sign of your ambitious uh, personality that yes i am going to take this forward to the world stage where i want to so even at the very very early uh, days we actually did a lot of trade shows in bangalore in shanghai uh, you know you know in in hong kong and singapore and different places we did our trade shows it did eat into our savings a lot but what happened was it got the word out that okay this is a company which is innovating in this space so and again you know there will be always be a few early uh, movers who would actually back you with that opportunity uh, again not everybody will adopt and pay for you but that's all right the the intent of going to more than one geography is a very important statement that you need to have in the very early days ki kya aap are you making it for india only are you making it only for gaziabad uh or are you making it for the entire world so basically create your playground as quickly as you can and make that intent visible to people they will take you with seriousness ki ha yaar even though they are small they actually have the passion to like like build it big and stuff and so there may be there is a chance for 
us to go and work with them. So wo bahut important hai. Humne yehi kiya tha. And that got us to a bunch of these trials in Philippines, in Bahrain, in Indonesia, uh, in Sri Lanka. And you know, that's how the story exploded. Eventually, we went to 17 countries. Our customers were in 17 countries. I told them that Don ko ekgyara mul ki police hunti hai aur mujhe satra. So that's because the way. So we, I mean, even today, right now in Zapscale, we are very clear that we would want to sell to the international market. So that statement of intent is very much a part of the vision statement, and everybody knows. And we should definitely act on that. So decide your market. Make sure you make an early statement of intent. True. Absolutely. Very very important. But uh, you know, uh, Marasesh, while I was uh, reading the book, there were a few you know interesting incidents that you mentioned that you and your team went through, especially in the international market. So can you share some of them for our uh, audiences? There are a lot of stories. One story, I one of our you know, team members went to Pakistan to sell. Uh, and uh, they went through, oh, they, they went to Pakistan the same night before that. There was heavy border firing. Hua tha, to, like, there was a lot of tension between India and Pakistan that day. Not unusual, but that day was specifically extra tension. And our guy was like, like, you know, uh, incommunicated for like almost four or five hours. We did not know that uh, Atari ka border crossed the border, which is in, you know, the Amritsar border. Uh, but then what happened was he was questioned by ISI in Pakistan. He was tailed by ISI for like three straight days when he was there. But he did very good. Uh, when we came back to India, he was tailed by Raw for like one month. Ki, kya kya Pakistan mein tumne? We're great friends, right? I, mean, hi hota hai. Uh, I remember traveling to Bangladesh and Bangladesh was like blowing up in like like riots, internal political riots. There were like, like chaos of riots rahe, people were being burned, cars were being burned. And we were traveling in ambulances because ambulances were the only vehicles which the rioters would let pass and not touch them. So we actually spent months and months traveling all around Bangladesh, selling, implementing, doing our work by traveling in ambulances. It was quite funny from that perspective. And I also remember that one of our colleagues were thrown out of an Ethiopian hotel because again, like me, he had long hairs. And apparently, anybody with long hairs can be a gay person. Uh, but because of that, the Ethiopian authority actually kicked him out of the hotel room at midnight. So there are like lots of tidbit stories there. I got mugged in Philippines. I remember, you know, I had a food poisoning bout in, in Sri Lanka. When I got straight into the hospital first day in, in Sri Lanka, I landed, ate their local food and straight to the hospital. And I also remember that one of my friends who went to China for uh, like he was dreaming food and like bahut bhukha tha bachara. and he wanted to have that that dim sum so, hum log yahan pe Hindi momo bolte na, momo. so he went to this shop and said hey can I get some momo and these guys were like really really pissed ki wo momo bol hai because momo in Chinese means kiss and he was asking this guy to give me a momo which is not culturally appropriate for that country so it, there are a lot of fun stories yaar. Wo sab likke, dal diye, book ke andar. because I thought ki, let's write a book where the stories of all these international travels and travails all come together to get you a fun story to read and you know laugh at sometimes as well if possible but but so, you know Marcy, the thing is uh ek startup kya kya nahi karwata hai founder ke paas. you know this this also shows that right ek kahani jo ho gai, wo to incident hai, but otherwise a founder has to go through so many other things as well right uh, which is you can't for right. such things right Aap to no, you can't. yeah these things we just just these things just happen right and you have to be like, look, like of course, you try to take care of yourself in a foreign country and stuff, which we did. Uh, and since we're working in 17 countries, we had so many different offices, people from all over, uh, you know, this place working for us. You try to understand the cultural nuances, but obviously, kabhi kabhi aisi galtiyan to hoi jayengi. Aur wo galtiyan baad mein hasne ke liye acha hai. Us time pe to prob it is not that fun. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, tell me, uh, you know, while reading the book, I also saw that. Uh, you know, you were the one in charge of raising the funds for the company, right? And you got rejected 119 times. Uh, so can you share that experience uh, as, as, as a human being as well? Rejection of 119 times. Uh, for two straight years, I tried to raise funds for, for Thetsol. Uh, and it was not possible. It was not happening. Two reasons. One was that... Uh, our product that we we're building was an apparel tech AI SaaS solution. Now, 2014 mein apparel tech kuch tha nahi, SaaS bhi kuch bana nahi tha, aur AI bahut kam logon ne dekha tha us time pe. So for the investors, we were like, uh, you know, a black swan, something that nobody has ever seen. 
right? Uh, so, so it is like you don't touch uh, these kind of things unless you really are one of those risk takers. Not by the way, again, not every investor is a risk taker. Most of the people follow a fear of missing out strategy in which like जो चल रहा है उसको follow करते हैं या उसके जैसा कुछ. तो uh, so, but for us, we were such an outlier that it was very difficult to like explain and you know like show traction and stuff. Us time we were doing trials everywhere. Customers भी नहीं आ रहे थे. So it was tough. And I remember that as a quick gully nukkar nahi hai Bangalore ya Mumbai mein jaha pe ki funding ke liye I had not done my mujra. I tried to raise funds from everywhere in every pin code of these two cities. I have done my you know puppet shows. It would not. You know, deliver. So people would talk to me and you know, like, okay, 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 we'll see, and then it will not happen. It changed when uh, we got this uh, Microsoft BizPark Startup Challenge Award. It was a you know an Indian startup competition which happened first in North India, where we won the Delhi chapter, and then you know the top ten startups competed in Bangalore in Microsoft Office, uh, where we came runners up. Uh, and it was surprising to me as well, but uh, great result. And from there, we got a lot of eyeballs on us, and eventually, one of them turned out to be uh, a positive one. It, it, by the way, it was not before drama. So, I have written in the book that I went to this Mumbai Angel meeting in Bangalore, Mumbai, and it was such a horrible experience, man. I was like, you know, entrepreneurs cannot be treated that that badly. Uh, but it is how it is. Like, you know, if you don't have money and nobody knows you, people have no obligation to be nice to you. And you know, as a startup founder, you realize that, boy, respect someone. Is an optional thing for people. Uh, they might not, first of all, treat you well enough, uh, and that you know that gets you. You get to experience that, and you get better at handling that kind of thing as well. 119 injections were hard, but I, I think after the first 20, 30, I got so used to it. Kiti kya, chalo, let's just keep doing our work. Hopefully, someday someone will put in something, and we will make something out of it. But it was it was hard. I can absolutely tell you that nobody likes to hear no. Uh, yeah. In jobs, we don't hear no's. Now, when we are jobs, we are working in jobs, so we don't have to deal with rejections. True. If you want to start up and you want to be an entrepreneur, the first thing you should be like very clear about is that, boss, the world is not going to be nice. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very hard. That's why I thought I should write this book so that I can tell what's going to happen to ninety-nine percent of startup founders. Uh, you know, people like us, you know, like mango people, जो लोग जो लोग मेहनत करेंगे और फिर so उटेशन when we got our first customer check uh ye ek uh, you know the factory in bangalore paid us 15000 dollars 10 lakh rupees ka spot us mane mein uh that was our first check 28 days that was that was a number second time when i was raising series a and the series a money was not coming because of the diligence and legal process and stuff we had 42 days of money left in the bank and last was when i sold the company on 18th of december 2018 i had 6 days of money in my bank so it was always scary like look let me tell you this it is not a great feeling that to know that you have so much of money in the bank and everything that you are doing and all you are building everything is going to like like turn into a pile of ash in next whatever 6 days 10 days 28 days is a very very uh, distressing disturbing and soul crushing thing to deal with uh, now i look back i say how what did we really do i really don't remember what did we do all i remember that we you know jo pani mein girta hai na usko tarna nahi aata uske paas sochne ka waqt nahi hota hai the only thing that that guy is probably trying to do is not drown and somehow make it to the shore you work so hard and you like you tum itna haath pair marte ho ki us time pe kya ho raha hota hai na wo exactly yaad nahi hota i can tell you that all what we did was we just made sure that we race remains laser focus on the execution part ki chalo dekho wo number girta rahega 30 से 29 होगा 28 होगा जो भी होगा लेट्स जस्ट कीप एक्सिक्यूटिंग एंड होप द दिस एक्सिक्यूशन वर्क्स वेल सो अगेन होप इज नॉट अ स्ट्रेटजी बट एट सम पॉइंट्स लाइक दिस यू ओनली हैव यू नो योर ओन वर्क टू शो फॉर व्हाटएवर इज गोइंग टू हैपन एंड थैंकफुली फॉर अस इट टर्न्ड आउट गुड ऑल आई कैन टेल इज दैट ब्रेवनेस या जो भी है ना वो वो हाइंडसाइट दिखता है ठीक है कि हां वो का ब्रेव था 
उस टाइम पे ब्रेवरी नहीं होता यार उस टाइम पे देयर इज ओनली एक्शन लाइक लेट्स जस्ट कीप पुटिंग वन स्टेप आफ्टर अनदर एंड लेट्स नॉट जस्ट गेट ओवरवेल्म्ड बाय द फैक्ट कि इतना बचा हुआ है एंड दैट्स द वे टू गो फॉरवर्ड आई गेस दैट वर्क फॉर अस एब्सोल्युटली एब्सोल्युटली मानसिज बट टेल मी अबाउट योर जर्नी विद यू नो थ्रेड्स ऑल गेटिंग अक्वायर्ड बाय कोर्ट्स हाउ वाज दैट होल एक्सपीरियंस यार वो क्या हुआ कि वी स्टार्टेड द एक्विजिशन प्रोसेस इन 2017 वी ऑलमोस्ट केम एंड किस्ड एंड देन वी सेड नो वो आई हैव पुट दैट इन द बुक एज वेल पूरी कहानी उसकी व्हिच वाज अगेन लाइक क्रशिंग केयर यार वी ऑलमोस्ट गॉट अक्वायर्ड बट इट डिड नॉट हैपन बट इट वाज लाइक अ रॉस एंड रैचेल स्टोरी वी कुड नॉट लिव अपार्ट वी कुड नॉट लिव टुगेदर जो फ्रेंड्स देखा होगा आपने सिटकॉम है उसमें द टू कैरेक्टर्स एनीवे सो वी कुड नॉट लिव टुगेदर बट वी कुड नॉट लिव अपार्ट सो वी अगेन केम बैक टुगेदर इन 2018 टू डू द एक्विजिशन what i understand about acquisitions is that acquisitions are uh, very very hard to do with public companies like we went and got acquired by a public company in uk which is the top 100 stocks in uk so they are extremely well regulated there are too many guidelines and things the best thing that can happen to a startup is another startup acquiring it it will be easiest it will be run by an entrepreneur on the other startup end jo ki jisko ye cheez apne andar bahut jaldi chahiye because startups of course obviously they are all try to do things fast right mm-hmm. so ye best experience hai ki aapka startup ko kisi aur startup ne acquire kar liya best second best is aapki startup ko kisi tech company ne acquire kar liya microsoft ne google ne jo ki tech company hai public hai but tech hai hamare case mein kya hoga ki the company is non tech so quotes is a company for 250 years old they are billion dollar company they make threads in fact whatever you are wearing whatever i am wearing everybody who is listening on and seeing is wearing 80% of that thread is made by coats uh and they had a technology arm which was acquiring us so a public company acquiring you is very very hard because there will be like a ton of diligence and like multiple rounds of interviews and checking the you know the, the i kitni bar dot hua hai t kitni bar cut hua hai so the dd process was 11 months for us due diligence hota kya hai ki jab aap when somebody wants to acquire you दे विल डू अ प्रॉपर डिलीजन की भाई इसका इतिहास क्या है इसने क्या क्या किया कहाँ खाया क्या पिया कितना पैसा यहाँ पे है कोई लीगल प्रॉब्लम तो नहीं है कोई फाइनेंशियल तो नहीं है सो दे डू द एंटायर पिक्चर एंड दैट पिक्चर इज नॉट हार्ड बट वट हार्ड इज इट टेक्स अलॉट ऑफ टाइम टू हैपन सो इन इन पब्लिक लिमिट कंपनी इट टेक्स इलेवन मंथ सो इफ यू इलेवन ट्वेल्व मंथ इफ यूरिंग अक्वायर्ड बाई पब्लिक लिमिट कंपनी मेक श्योर की आपका उतना टाइम होना चाहिए उतना पैसा भी होना चाहिए आपके पास which we did not know obviously like you know we were first time entrepreneurs we made lots of mistakes yeah uh so so yeah it was the experience was hard uh but then the result was good uh it could have been much better but uh, you know uh, it was not 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 terrible again uh, as a category creator first time founder building something where nobody has built something there will always be some you know like 19 20 hoga which happened of course and i put that in my book also uh we could have made far more money than what eventually we made, did make but i would say that uh, i'm overall i'm quite satisfied with the overall you know result finally and you know that's how it was well that's incredible uh, you know manasej but as you mentioned the last part i wanted to uh, draw your attention there uh, you you were about to sell it for 30 million dollars then it yeah. came down to 13 million dollars so to speak right and that's what you mentioned in the book as well so yes. tell me because there are so many founders who are in that situation and they back out right assuming that they'll get even higher right so so how is that situation to be in and how do you manage those circumstances aisi bahut sari kahaniyan hain jahan pe the founder has said no to an offer like this and gone on to build a really big billion dollar business of unbelievable magnitude and their posters and their stories are everywhere but for every such story there are thousands such stories where people had an offer like this and they said no i'm going to build it very very big and then we don't even know them right now mm-hmm. so and they are they are in a drunk nostalgia in some bar telling about a story about their old times ke kaash mein aisa kar diya hota i think that entrepreneurship like anything else you get better by doing it multiple times and first time when you building a startup build for the ex- experience of it don't think that it is going to give you amazing amount of returns and stuff the experience itself is going to basically make you a better entrepreneur for next time onwards so my thesis was very simple my thesis was look we have built a business for which i mean it is very hard to build it which is what we did we created a category which is very hard to do we sold in countries like pakistan bangladesh sri lanka where nobody wants to really go and sell anything uh, tough things to do 
We have done that piece. And we know that wins are hard to come by. Let us build this story and take it to a logical conclusion. Have that thing on your resume. We will build again. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was very clear that, okay, let us not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's take the offer that we have got. Uh, and again, you know, we were naive. We should have had more money in the bank, knowing that the DD will take 11 months, for which in which we actually tried to grow and we spent uh, for our growth. It basically meant that the company acquiring us knew that you know they, we cannot go anywhere else. We were we were. It's gonna uh, mountain bolte rim rocked. You cannot go up. You cannot go down. You're stuck. So it happens, yeah. And I'm I'm I have made very clear that it was that. Uh, but the outcome was still fine. I mean, it could have been, of course, much more. 200 crore was 100 crore's place. But 100 crore is not enough. I mean, still in the economic class seat, I'm I'm okay with that. But again, my 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 two cents is that build one story, complete to logical conclusion, and then build again if you really want to. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not go chasing some wild dreams because for every one wild dream succeeding, there are thousands of dreams to just just die an unnamed. Death on a battlefield with no name on the grave. So at least there is a name on the grave. It's called the economic class founder. So so there you are, man. That's 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 what I can tell you right now. Well, Marcus, that's incredible. You know, because uh, while reading the book, I also got this feeling that okay, there are certain instances, uh, situations in life where you have to take certain decisions, whether it is right or wrong, you get to know only later. But that's how uh, life is, and and the life of an entrepreneur is never easy, right? You're you're having multiple battles at the same time. But I think uh, you know. On that note, uh, Man says thank you for taking out time today with us. It was lovely speaking to you, and it was great, great reading uh, the book as well because it shows the real, really, uh, you know, the struggle that you went through, you and your team faced. But it was wonderful, Man says. Thank you, Ishab. It was great talking to you, and I hope uh, your listeners and your channel folks will go and check out the book. Uh, it is written with the raw honesty of of building a business. Uh, and I have not done sugar coat. What has happened is what has been written. Uh, and I will. I have no problem saying it many times that if you really want to see what the startup world really is. uh then if you read about the the top 1% as omatos and those you know like elon musk and you know all these guys that's not going to be the journey for most of the folks most of the journey log ki journey meri aisi hogi isme chaos bhi hoga isme drama bhi hoga passion bhi hoga bahut dard bhi honge aansu bhi honge but wo milke finally na ek bada mazedar kuch banega aur wo mazedar kahaniyan maine is book mein i have tried to put it together hopefully uh, you know your audience will also like that but thanks a lot for putting me into the show show i really love talking to you great great message and to all our listeners thank you guys for joining us today do read this book the economic class founder to know more about the real journey and average entrepreneur faces devoid of any glamour guys unlike the big daddies of amazon facebook uber flipkart paytm and so on goodbye signing off for now guys thank you thanks bye